I'm joined today by Jamie Hart, the Racing Director at UK Tote. The reason for the for the Zoom is was that I've been trying to chase around and get some answers on behalf of a number of people from Lifford. I had lots and lots of inquiries from people um, to find out what's going on. We hoped, we, we talked about Lifford reopening a year ago. Uh, so far it hasn't happened. Who better person to, to ask than Jamie? So good morning, Jamie. Um, tell me... Why are we a year behind? Yeah, good to, good to talk to you, Floyd. Um, well, we're, we're a year behind. I think we were a little, um, certainly in terms of getting a stadium ready and getting it ready for racing, we could have hit those kind of earlier time frames. Um, but then because, you know, Greyhound Racing, it's still kind of pretty much government run over in Ireland. You know, everything takes a bit longer when you're dealing with uh, red tape. Um, we've got a lot of support from GRI, um, but GRI are the only people that are licensed to run a tote in uh, Ireland on Greyhound Racing. Um, so, yeah, if, if, if Lifford was um, 500 yards in the other direction, it might have been a bit, bit quicker because obviously then it would kind of come under you know, UK jurisdiction and we, we have our UK licenses. But to go into Ireland, we have to work absolutely hand in hand with GRI, who are the sole kind of license holders for greyhound racing over there and whenever you're dealing with a, a government kind of you know semi-government body like that it, things take a bit of time they're, they're we, they also had a change of um, ceo while we were going through the process which which isn't to no fault of anybody but you know Jill Ger, Ger was up to speed and then and then uh, Dervla o'brien's come in she's been very good with us um but obviously she's she's hitting the ground you know completely fresh so we've had to kind of go back a little bit retrace our steps and make sure everybody's on the same page but it's again there's nothing sinister in it it's uh, GRI very supportive um, we've put a final kind of uh, proposal and contract through to them uh, recently so we're hoping that that'll go through their lawyers uh, it's very similar to the, eight, the the deal we have with um, HRI for horse racing and of course you know UK Tote Group and uh, Horse Racing Ireland and Tote Ireland uh, work very closely, uh, and, and we we run the the uh, pools for the for horse racing island. So, so we're looking for a very similar um, scenario here, just for Lifford, just to get this experiment off the ground of a low margin tote. And and of course, for GRI, it's harder for them uh, to look see be seen to be reopening Lifford because they closed it themselves uh, because the old model wasn't working there. But that's why we're coming in and the tote, UK tote group are underwriting all of the prize money and making sure that it won't cost GRI anything at all. Um, it, it's no risk to them, but we're hoping then that the, the low margin tote model works, gets people going racing more often, gets people uh, betting more often on horse, on dog racing uh, in Ireland. And of course, then the GRI have all the other tracks and we're hoping that they then roll the model out across the other tracks if it is successful. And if it isn't successful, then uh, it's, you know, GRI aren't at risk um, financially and they won't be carrying the can. So that's the main thing, you know, certainly from a government uh, point of view, they don't, governments don't like risk. So that's why we're taking, doing the experiment, uh, underwriting the experiment for them. Um, and fingers crossed it does go well. And it means that the rest of uh, Irish racing can kind of follow suit after that and we can prove it works. Yes, of course. So if we're talking, um... Let, let's let's talk timelines um how close are you i mean we, we, we're talking you, you mentioned there that uh, that they're due to make a decision um aren't they don't, don't they have a board meeting was it this week they have they have board meeting once a month where they get official ratified decisions um this week we were this week uh they haven't got it was last week that they had one um so we're we're down for the next one which will be i think i think it's the last thursday in the month or something, something like that but obviously that the world doesn't stop in between so if they have any kind of legal questions and they have plenty of time to come back to us um we're hoping we've nailed everything we're hoping that everything's kind of you know tick box now obviously they may have plenty of questions and, and so we wouldn't preempt any of that but we're we're, we're ready to work very closely with the GRI to get it through. One thing's for certain, if you know, it, we, we could certainly have raced at Lifford and Lifford's in a good state um, now to, and, the, and the, the condition of the course is fantastic. We've got uh, Kenneth Cross in there that's a fantastic um, course page and making sure it's a perfect surface. Um, it was always a very good track, Lifford, great galloping track and 
we're certainly hoping to bring that back for punters and make sure that the dog population in the north of the country is well served by a, by a world-class track. Okay, so let me say, let's assume that, I don't know, third week in June, which seems reasonable, there is another board meeting, I don't know when it is. How long after that meeting, let's say the 21st of June, how long after that before you could start running official trials at Lifford? Um, that would be that would have to be signed off by um, GRI in terms of the licensing of official trials. But if it, if it's signed off at that board meeting, my understanding is we could run, start running trials very quickly. Um, there shouldn't be anything to hold it back. We we do have to uh, we have to um, in terms of the tote operation, uh, we're going to kick off getting that's those the terminals and things put in. Um, that's all kind of lined up. It's using the same systems as, as the other GRI tracks that, that were recently upgraded. So we'll be using those. So there should be a very little hold up there. Um, so we've, we'd be very hopeful of, of a start as soon as possible. I don't, I don't, I don't like to get, given that we've already called out dates that we haven't here, I don't like to call out a date, but with, it will be all systems go to, to, to get everything up and running as fast as humanly possible. Okay, and just so we can kind of get some some idea on 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 the scale of this, as you you, you mentioned earlier, um, this could potentially, and I realise we're dealing potential. Nobody's putting carts before horses, certainly not with anything even agreed on this one. But what would the scenario look like if you were able to do a a bigger deal in involving all the Irish tracks? How would that impact on your business? How would you how would you handle um, the the Irish racing business in terms of what you do as a company? Well, if we were doing anything with the rest of Ireland, we'd just be commingling with GRI because it would say that they they own the pool in Ireland, so it would be fully commingled with GRI. If we've proven out the uh, low margin model and we've started to get some international traction with people wanting to bet into Lifford and into other Irish racing. Then we'd be looking to take that wider and co-mingle uh, through all of our global co-mingling partners. Now that's obviously in the future. Uh, GRI have uh, other um, contracts in place with SIS, for example. SIS with any when anybody that does a contract with SIS um, tends to sign over their pairing mutual rights um, to SIS, especially their international pairing mutual rights. So I'm not sure how long um, GRI have got left with their contract with SIS, but that we wouldn't be able to go against any any contracts that they already have in place, which is another reason why we ended up picking up Lifford, because every other dog track in the UK and Ireland seems to have a contract with SIS, which precludes us doing any kind of deals with them. So we had to start with a, a, a track that had been closed down, doesn't have an existing contract with SIS, so that we could run this low margin experiment. Um, so, but. You know, we'd be very keen to work closely with GRI and, and expand uh, coverage of, horse, of dog racing from Ireland across all of our partners worldwide. So just before, before I let you go, what does it look like then racing starts at Lifford? Um, obviously, you, presumably you'd have a couple of bookmakers on, on course anyway. Um, and then the, the, the gambling opportunities outside the track, how would that operate? Well, initially we'll have it with, We'd get it working on course is the most important piece, just so that people can turn up and bet and uh, enjoy it on course. We'd then have it available through Toteco UK, um, tote.ie, uh, so that people would be able to access it uh, you know, remotely. Uh, we would then need to make that available to all of our other partners um, so that people could bet into those tote, those tote pools um, via, and we've, we're obviously connected to you know, nearly every... UK and Irish bookmaker. Um, so we'd be we'd be we'd be trying to work, we'd be opening up those kind of connections. We'd have to obviously work through the contracts with them because they're used to a bigger uh, a bigger takeout rate. Um, again, we'd need to you know make something that their customers wanted. They they will only plug stuff in that their customers demand. So if we get a really good jackpot and stuff working at Lifford, uh, some you know they, there's good pools there. Then then we should be able to offer. Um, all of those lifted services and you know, potentially other Irish services across those partners. But that's um, that's that we, we want to get it working on course and working on on tote.ie and tote.co.uk first. 
And ju just to remind people uh, who haven't followed the story from the beginning, that, that, that the whole concept behind this whole ethos is, is about a very low, very low margin um, take, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, ju I just think particularly the Greyhound, uh, the Greyhound punter has been poorly done to over the last 30 years. Um, if you look across all the other sports, every other sport has had margins eroded so that it's much more in the punter's favour. You, you know, you look at football, you can bet to, you know, one and a half percent on the Asian handicaps. You can bet, you know, that you can hunt around, you're pretty much betting to zero. Horse racing's had, you know, good solid exchanges and, you know, now that it's so competitive for the horse racing punter because everybody, know, all bookmakers know that horse racing punters are your most valuable uh, kind of punter, you know, the, the if you can get somebody horse racing and playing casino and stuff like that, they're the absolute sweet spot. So, you know, everyone's got very competitive looking for that horse racing punter. You've got the six, seven places that people are, you know, over broke place books. Um, Best odds guaranteed has been around for a while. You've got, you know, there, there's a, it, it's very competitive. Yes, it's difficult to get a bet on quite often um, these days because they are so competitive that then when you take advantage of the, that competitiveness, you tend to get, um, as a customer, you tend to get restricted. But, you know, greyhound racing, meanwhile, is run at 25 to 30 percent. Um, the totes are run at 20, between 25 and 30 percent. Um, you know, if you go to the, you know, everybody used to go to the dogs, obviously, in London. There's hardly, there's, you know, Romford's the only track. I'd still count that as London. I know it's Essex. You know, it's still the only, it's the only track really to go to. People don't go to the dogs anymore because the punters stop going. Because you, you can't turn up, you know, it's the punter in the office that organised the trip to the dogs, you know. And now that the punter can't justify turning up and betting to 28% in a six-runner race, everything else he's betting on, um, it, he's, well, he's well catered for, and it's very competitive. I just think this is the, pure, it's the best possible uh, betting product, uh, dog racing. It's much more accessible than horse racing. Um, you can get into ownership much easier than in horse racing. You can get groups of you together, and you know. And I think that's something we definitely want to encourage up at Lifford. But um, but the punter needs to be looked after. And you know, when we had those massive pools in the kind of fifties and sixties, forties, you know, they, they were running they were running White City at six percent takeout, one percent a runner. We would be six percent at Lifford, but um, the legal position that in in Ireland, you are not legally allowed to run at less than ten percent. Now, I think I think we'll be able to potentially get down to six percent by offering, you know, kind of bonus dividends and things like that. But uh, I, you know, that it's a pure betting product that should be run realistically around six percent, and we will try to get to six percent um, in in everything we do with dogs. Because when you look at um, Australia, and they were closing down dog racing kind of five years ago. And now they're running for $3 million race, you know, races. And that's a 14% tote on eight runners. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think if you make it, if, you, if, you, if we really double down on great quality racing, fantastic dog welfare, and a good, a good betting product where everybody can get on, it's very fair, uh, it's, it's transparent. You're betting to a fair margin. People can walk out after 10 races, 12 races, having won, which is almost a mathematical possibility of, you know if you're running 13 races at 28 percent um so you know I, th I think i'm hoping that with this lifford um ex experiment we'll be able to show that dog racing is actually the best product out there for for betting and for punters and, and rejuvenate it somehow interesting just just out of interest again in terms of um the exchanges what percentage do they work to well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like any exchange, you know, it's just the liquidity there. If you go in there early, they'll try, I mean, they'll, they'll never go less than 100%. Um, but you go in there and they're still, they're still betting to about 110 and stuff because you're, because you're, there's not enough liquidity there. So that's always the trouble with an exchange. An exchange obviously can get very close to zero. Then you pay your commission, you might be pay, paying your premium charge. But um, the exchange itself, before all the commissions, you know, can get down to zero, it's just... There's very little liquidity there. Jamie, thank you for joining me. It's been absolutely fascinating and uh, hopefully we can get everybody up to speed. Excellent. Thanks, Floyd.